So this is master class five. Um, don't, don't what was that called? It? Don't use your final form first. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So it's the, I mean, from my personal experience, I've gotten used to the idea that <clears throat> I don't want to awaken first. I'm awaken second. I want to awaken when I want to awaken. Um, so that way, I. Well, one, if I'm trying to awaken for a strategy or combo, uh, a lot of times, for example, the the leaders where you untap two energies, um, I tend to want to save it for turn, for turn four, um, when I have four energies. So that way, if I that way, when I tap three energies to play something, and then when I awaken, untapping two energies, I will still have that one energy from the four energy I originally had, and then I will be back at three. So I pray. So that way I turn my that way I turn my four energies into essentially six energy. So that's why I, <clears throat> I do my best to try to save uh, my awakening for that scenario where I'm on turn four and I'm trying to do some type of combo that will require six energies to pull off. And being able to do it on turn four instead of waiting till turn six when you have six energy to do it is better right most duels don't last that long anyway so being able to do a turn four six energy combo is uh pretty optimal so that's why i don't want to awaken first so even if my opponent gets me down to four life uh, you know on turn two or something i don't want to awaken then because it'd be too early um and definitely i'm not in a hurry to try to awaken before my opponent awakens because it's not like it's really going to give me more of an advantage to awaken before my opponent does um, in some cases it might be possible that awakening before your opponent does give you an advantage but that's if you have a strategy with your leader's awakened side and, and there's some synergy or something and you take advantage of it I, for example I can agree these down here are the leaders that I, I see um, obviously they're better when they're awakened so of course you, we can easily see value in Boma awakening because drawing two cards as opposed to drawing one card on her front side is more beneficial plus her being 10k on the back instead of 5k on the front obviously you want to awaken her so her being awakened clearly is way better than her not being awakened so in, that, in those rare instances I understand you wanting to awaken sooner than later with these types of leaders uh you know so soul striker uh, goku um hmm i actually haven't seen this the back side <laughs> i only really use the front side of the leader so the back side says when this card attacks draw one card then switch up to two of your amount of blue energy to active mode okay Second auto at the end of your turn, choose up to one of your blue unison cards and switch it to active mode. Uh, yeah, yeah that, I remember that effect now. That's if you have like a blocker, a, a blue blue unison blocker, it'd be useful to tap on tap, tap on tap. I think there's another, yeah, there, yeah. Well, that's the one that'd be good to use. Super Saiyan Rose, uh, Goku Black. He's a he's a three drop blocker. And he has some ability when the leader switches him. You get you get markers. I think that was the idea. So that's some good synergy there with with that unison. But um anyway. So obviously on the front side you 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 untap one energy. Um, and from right you choose between drawing a card unta or untap an energy. On the awakened side, you draw and untap, so you get both. You get to draw, and then you untap two, not just one energy. So clearly, being awakened is better. Plus the second auto with your unison, especially if it's a blocker, unison. Um, there's synergy there. Um, there's actually a, another, another one, right? There's the dual attack blocker, go uh, super saiyan go tanks, um, four drop uh, unison. That's another good one to use because you can. Because you can swing with it twice because it's a dual attack. Swing with it twice and then use um, 
uh, start so Soul Striker uh, Goku's uh, you know auto to to restand it so you can you can have a 20k blocker so that's some good synergy there I like that all right of course Zamasu being awakened <coughs> is worth it um, um, clearly this is one of those uh, these are the few leaders you don't want to them to awaken um, pretty early like you don't want uh, few Zamasu to be awakened period <laughs> You definitely don't want Topo Canada Destruction, uh, right? Topo Awaken. These are leaders you definitely don't want Awaken. Especially, you definitely don't want them Awaken early. Because this right here, untapping two energies and then the whole unison thing and the draw in type energy, that's way too much advantage. So, these are the types of leaders where I would um, try to avoid Awakening them early um, when, when I play. Um, especially Zomasu. Oh my god. You... Unless you have a way of sending a uh, life from their deck to the dropper, or you have a way of dealing so much damage that they you mill them out, I don't I don't recommend awakening the Masu. Uh, you, you need to save up your attacks and try to go for one big turn where you're dealing a lot of damage so you can end your opponent out um, <coughs> through attacks. You want to get you want to get your opponent down to three life when you go up against the Masu. And then triple strike that shit. Because um, you don't, you you know, you want you got you want to have the triple strike, which can be difficult. But you definitely want to try to triple strike that. I mean, that's if you want to win. So. Again, like I said, you know, you, you, um, most of these, most leaders, um, uh, have really good, um, front side effects. You know, like, for example, Cell, on the front side, <coughs> lets you active main, look at the top five cards of your deck, add a card from there to your hand, uh, shuffle the rest back into your deck, and then pitch a card from your hand. So, you can kind of... Yeah, so it might not seem like a draw effect, but if you treat your drop area as an extension of your hand, then essentially you're drawing a card every turn um, when you use this effect. When he's awakened, he doesn't have a draw effect. He doesn't have an effect when you attack to draw. He doesn't have an effect of once per turn, you can you know, draw, pitch, or look at the top five, add a card pitch. He doesn't have that. Only his front side has that type of ability. His back side has other abilities. So, so you don't want to awaken him until you need to. And in order to utilize his um, awaken side effects, you need four or less life. So that's why you rather stay on the front side, so you can gain that value from his uh, act front active main. And you want to build your deck um, at first, obviously based off of the front side of the leader, which is what I always do. That's why it's, for me it's like. Besides that, strategically, it's better to awaken second than to awaken first. Is also the factor that it's like you should have built your deck around your leader's front side's abilities because once you start the game, you're gonna start off with the leader's front side abilities. Um, once you finish utilizing your leader's front side abilities, then that's when awakening um, comes into factor. Like for example, Vegeta. I play him because one, he's critical. He's a critical leader that I don't have to take a life or any of that stuff. In order to have that effect, you just by default have it, <coughs> and then when you have, and then he 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 counts as all these colors, you know, red, blue, green, and yellow. So he counts for all, you know, the colors of all the leaders except for black. So you can take advantage of that. Um, <coughs> and so, I I build decks around that fact that he's multiple colors, so I can splash different cards and come up with different deck builds, different uh, combinations of cards because of that. That fact of him being different, you know, being all the different colors. And then he has crit. So I automatically get the full advantage of, you know, the crit ability so I can use that. It's a strategy in itself of dealing my opponent damage that they don't benefit from. And then double strike with Chompa, you know, stuff like that. But then when I awaken, 
that's when you know uh, that's that's late game that's like okay i got my opponent down to, to two damage i don't need crit no more now i could just go for double strike damage to end the game so <coughs> with all my attacks i could just go for single damage now and, and double strike damage and just end the game so awakening at, at that point is okay and usually that'd be like around turn four maybe turn five depending on how the the, the duel went and then i'll awaken i'll awaken then if my opponent awakens on turn two or three well that's on you you know teach their own if, if you felt you needed to awaken to to awaken at that point then you awaken at that point but realistically you don't need to awaken until ter turn four. Um, turn four is the most optimal time to awaken, unless you got like a really, unless you have a strategy that requires you to awaken on turn two or three. Like for example, my Bobbity, not Bobbity, uh, my Peel Off um, deck that has a turn three awakening strategy, but that's because it has a turn three awakening strategy, right? Most of my other, most of my other decks. Um, have a uh, turn turn four strategy, especially if the leader has a uh, uh, energy untapping abilities. Like for example, this. Yep, you know, I'm actually building a deck with this leader, so this would be a turn four. You know, uh, strategy. <coughs> you know, drawing two cards and untapping two energy. So this would be a turn four leader. That's when I will want to awaken, so I can take advantage of that part of drawing two cards and tap into energies and just go off and do some some you know powerful strategy <coughs> and if I just so happen to have four less life then you know I could take advantage of his uh, his active main abilities um, but all I'm really trying to do is use the, f the act his front size active main ability to get you know specific combo pieces in my hand and then other other combo pieces in the drop area so I can get the dredge uh, strategy going right and then and then when it's time for me to turn my four energy on turn four into six energy then you know I'll be ready to awaken and ready to take care of take advantage of that now his awaken side he has some effects of course um, if you're if you have four or less life choose one card under this card yeah place it to drop it. okay so you trigger his ability when you have four less life and his first effect you can choose is until the start of your next main phase if your opponent plays a battle card it is placed into rest mode oh, that's alright second ability choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards KO it then choose one card in your opponent's hand and place it into driver that's the effect that I would want to use so that's, so that's decent you know I mean, when you have four less life you can trigger that ability to Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. Then choose one card in your opponent's hand and place it in the drawer. The cool thing is you don't you don't have to pop a battle card to to make them uh, drop a card. And I like the fact that you choose a card from your opponent's hand. So that's good, especially if you're good at at choosing cards from your opponent's hand, you'll greatly benefit from that. So that's the the only effect I would use. I would just use that. So it's decent, you know, it helps you get close to ending them out, especially if you trigger that effect, right? Then when you swing, with whatever you're swinging, more likely something that's double strike or triple strike that has a high attack, like 25k power, for example. So 25k double strike, and then you already use this effect, so your opponent already has one less card, and then you play like two Android um, 18 super combos, and make them drop two more cards. So right there, they just drop three cards for this. Or, like I plan to do is, especially now since I know that's a, that, that part of the effect is, is there, I will, um, oh, oh yeah, this will be a good combo. Um, I think I did this before, where um, I do my strategy to bring back Android, what's his name, uh, and the, the five drop uh, cell, you know, imperfect cell, right, the five drop cell, then give it Android 8. I think is what I need and yeah Android 18 in order to turn it into um, um, perfect cell the seven drop perfect cell so and since the leaders you know obviously Android my opponent will have the 
I have to drop cards from the hands until they have three cards left in the hand. Then I'll activate this leader's ability to make them drop one more card from the hand, so that way they're down to two cards. Then I will swing with the cell, because I think the cell is a 25k double strike. I can't remember at the moment, but swing with, wait, I can actually check, All right, because I got the deck right there. I'm still tweaking it, but yeah, here's the five drop, which is double strike. Okay, 30k, that was right, that's what makes them. All right, so I bring them out, 30k double strike, so that's really good stats. Of course, swing with it, and then where is she? There she is, and then use Android 18, use two of them to, to get rid of the remaining two cards from my opponent's hand. And then they have no cards, so no no blocking, right? No comboing, and I don't have to worry about comboing. Well, I already comboed, so I'm, I'm right, um, 50, I'm 50k double strike. So I'm 50k double strike going for game, but my opponent literally has has no cards in hands to to stop me. So there's that. Um, back to what I was talking about. All right, so you get that idea. So, uh, so awakening your leader, aka your final form, is is largely useful only when you're going for game, um, or you know, comboing by using the leader's awakening effect as part of a combo. Um, but there are some leaders where awakening early is beneficial because that is that is their best form, right? Is their final form. And that's the only time they actually give you the most value, or at least start giving you value. Because sometimes their front sides are not as valuable as their back side. I think Tobo only, he attacks and draw on his front side and that's it. So, not very valuable. But when you awaken him, then he's valuable. Uh, Zamasu, he does have a take a life thing, so he has a self, self awakening ability. Um, but yeah, there are two or less life in order to awaken them. I'd rather awaken them while you still have a lot of life just in case. Preferably five or more life to avoid any uh, plays where somebody can make you send your life to the drop area and then you can just lose from that or take life from your, your life area and put it at the bottom of your deck and it's like, oh, well, that's the same thing. <laughs> I can lose from that just because I have no more life. Um, I think that would be it, just uh, pretty much the idea that you rather awaken second than to awaken first. That's just my recommendation. I've tried both methods. I tried awakening first and seeing if that gave me value, um, you know, advantage or whatnot. Because um, at first, especially since set one, it, it felt like, it felt like, yeah, um, my opponent had the advantage when they were awakened before me. Um, but it's because the leaders back then, the only time you drew was when you were awake, you were on the awakened side. But even though they had, you know, some card advantage over me by, you know, being awakened early, because I was obviously playing aggro right off the bat, and they were drawing, getting advantage, and every time I dealt them damage, they drew more, you know, they added cards from their life to their hand, so it just became, you know, they, uh, where they had card advantage, and it's like... Yeah, I need to uh, I need to fix fix my strategy. And at the time, there was the idea that you know your awakened side was your best side. But I, I really didn't like that idea because I didn't like that I had to have four less life in order to get to my awakened side, which is quote unquote my best side. And it's like, hmm, I want my front, the front side of the leader to be the best side, like to start the game off. And then when you get close to the end of the game, then you awaken, you know, as your final form, as your as your finishing strategy um, um, I like the idea of using it as a way of turning the ties as a way of sh turning the duel around where it's like oh man you're beating me all right time for me to awaken you know and and use my full power instead of instead of not using my full power right so awakening drawing two cards for example and you can use that defensively like oh man drew two cards cool I'm able to, I'm able to block your your final attack giving me one more turn so that's important and then you know if you make a comeback and win then that's great then it was worth it awakening last instead of awakening first so that's the point I'm trying to make is that a lot of times it's better to awaken second not to awaken first 
but there are some exceptions to the rule, as they say. And that'll be the end of the video.